Do we sit any closer? I mean, we're closer. There's no reason for us to all sit so far apart. I, I don't think, unless we're all bathing regularly, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I had. Uh, so I asked him, if, you know, I said, you know, are you guys at all? Because I, I, I don't know everybody there, so I wouldn't know who, you know, I only know some of the people, and if they were here, some of them were here, I wouldn't know that they were affiliated with my union. He said, well, um, he and, and somebody else had come down at one time, and I guess there was, must have been something going on with safe ground, and, and somebody yelled at him and told him they weren't, um, you know, they weren't homeless and they should leave. And so, you know, what they were wanting to do was to offer printing, free printing. They want to support us. And I do think, I know we sort of had a little bit of discussion last time, and we certainly don't want to be co-opted, and I agree with that. We don't want to be an adjunct to another, you know, entity. Right. But at the same time, we do want to coalesce. We do want to have millions. We want to exactly. have more. And I think we need to be encouraging people like like my union buddies and you know to be a part of this. And they're eager to be if they get a little bit of encouragement. And I think I I don't think that they are doing it to you know in order to make local one a bigger and stronger union they're right. doing it to right. make our country a better right. country right. and um, so that that's my thought and that's you know with move to amend with with everything else that's trying to do a lot of the same things that we're trying to do i think we ought to do everything we can to bring people in absolutely i think o occupy is, is in a phase of recruitment necessary phase of recruitment one of the things that has to happen for a successful revolution. It is important to stay leaderless, though. No bosses, nobody. I mean, right. you know, as soon as somebody starts barking orders or some right. some union comes in and goes, well, you know, we contributed the money for this, so we ought to have some say so about. We already have a little bit of that. And then already. you know, and then it kind of goes in a bad direction. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the feelings. The other big reason that I wanted to get this group together is to somehow bring the conflicts out into the open, bring the doubts and the difficulties and the issues out in the open face to face so that the people who are involved in it are talking with the community, you know, and that we don't act enough as a community. We act too much, too much typing back and forth and texting and messaging and meetings and reporting to the things and the harm. And the community itself is kind of left wondering, well, I, I think I said 26 committees in search of a purpose, that we don't really have a feeling of working as a whole, as a body. At least that's my feeling. We, yeah. When we get together in the GA, what we see very often is the conflicts start erupting, the, the differences, the questions, and we're trying to solve conflict issues in, in the General Assembly instead of in the community. And I kept po pointing back to the fact it's because we didn't spend six weeks in the tents. If we had, like m some of the Occupy movements, spent six weeks together in tents 24-7 all the time, we would have worked out a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. But instead we just skipped right over that and went to the committees and the things and the texting and the, and we've left out the face-to-face, -face, everybody... I, I, I think we skipped over uh, some other very important things. Uh, the Occupy movement has been birthed out of dialogue among citizens over the last 40 or 50 years. That dialogue consisted of complaints about what the government was doing, what corporations were doing, uh, whether or not capitalism is, is the best way to go. So after 40 or 50 years of people talking about this, writing about this, making movies about this, the national mindset has come to a point where we can have this movement, where enough people are on board with these ideas that you know the government shouldn't have full control of our lives. It should be for the people, not not for the wealthy. We can talk about you know alternative budgets and you know alternative. Uh, economic models besides capitalism, but it took 40 or 50 years of dialogue amongst people before this movement was birthed. Now that it's here, 
it's it, I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but it's it's in the process now of reforming those things that the dialogue was about. Forty or fifty years ago, this movement was a long-term goal. Now it's here and it's in motion. But now it's time for a new dialogue. Now there's time for another far-reaching goal. If, if we can assume that this is a successful revolution and the things that we've been talking about are changed, it's really only going to reform the existing existing structure. But is that enough? Is that enough to create what is a good society? The Occupy movement has skipped over asking that question. Yes. What is a good society? Yes. Yes. What is a good person? What what is an alternative model and, a, and an alternative mindset to what we have. Exactly. And, and that's exactly. what I would really like this group here to focus on. Me, we have all the too. committees, we have all the GAs that are, that are going to take care of reforming the government, the, the, having a revolution, which is a necessary step. And it, it still is a long-term goal, but an even farther reaching goal is defining what it is to be a new society. What type of mindset right. do we want to create? And that dialogue needs to start in groups like this. The, the whole, the way that we even communicate to each other needs to be redefined. In Western society, in America especially, just the dialogue, the way that we ask, ask each other questions is almost in a challenging, competitive way. Right. Uh, just, right. you know, our mannerisms, right. our, our advertising, our, the way we raise our children, the, ev everything is really geared towards competitiveness and separatism. There is, there is not a lot of unity. Like you're saying, the community does not act as a community. And to, cha to change this takes, takes decades, just like it took decades before we got to the Occupy movement to happen. And it takes, it takes years of dialogue and new, new communication methods, new words, new, new uh, vocabularies. And, and I would really like to see things like that just discussed in, in groups like this. And I mean, I, I'm not the best person for this. I mean, I'm all in for reform. I'm all in for getting senators out of D.C. That's what I'm good at, being on the ground, laying the brickwork. But I would like to see people who have you know, nonviolent communication skills come to these meetings. People who have uh, you know, training in, in uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Buddhism or Keto or you know, things that really you know, develop the mind and, and you know, just a whole thing. I like to say, I'm not the best person for this. I don't think you're going to find any, any argument there. That that's certainly what we need to bring in to be more inclusive. What what was coming to my mind while you were talking? It's like there's a massive massive issue of trust. We don't trust each other anymore because we all think that we're conning each other, or playing some game, and we've got a hidden agenda, or we're trying to sell you something, we're trying to. Do. And we've been trained to think that way for so long that it's automatic. And for us to get into a group like this and say, okay, all bets are off, we're not going to do that anymore, people go, well, what do you do that's not that? What exactly. do what? Exactly. And I've been saying it is first unlearning some things yes. and in order to begin learning the art of community, the art of acting and working as a community and functioning as a community not as this individualist, competitive... I keep saying we have a crossroads experience here. We're either going to go into competitive individualism even further, or we're going to say, enough of that, we need to go towards cooperative forms of gov government. A cooperative community, not competitive individualism. That didn't work. It ruined us. It just almost destroyed us. So we're saying, how do we move in the direction of a cooperative community? in a country where that means socialism, communism, yada, 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 yada. And it's true, we have been doing for this for 50 years. I was there 50 years ago when we said, basically, this culture is corrupt. Consumerism is corrupt. The materialism is corrupt. This whole society is corrupt. Your values are totally screwed up. You don't care about anything that's important. You don't care about each other. And so we did this thing about, we're all going off into communism. We're going to just make our own damn world because this world sucks. And then we came back and said, that don't work either. We can't be a little isolated commune because you get squeezed and killed and died and squished. Because they, we don't like that. The society doesn't like it. So what are we left with? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I jumped in front of you. Say it quick. Um, well, what he said was um, 
it was it's important about saying leaderless. Well, I think that's how it should be in like reality. Just like Occupy. There's a few people that that like lead like discussions and stuff, but there aren't really like leaders like presidents or anything. saying you do this, you do that, you do this. <laughs> and there would be like no government but and like at every town hall like on Saturday or whatever, um, whoever wanted, wh whoever wants to come can come and like they'd have a general assembly, and and there will be like a few people like picked, but not like as presidents, like to lead, to lead a few things, not everything. Absolutely, kind of like this works, where we have a lot of people. He lead a lead a group or lead a this or lead a committee, but they're, they're not leading. Occupy, they're just taking a place in Occupy, doing their best. The GA leads Occupy, the community leads Occupy. We make our decisions by consensus and whatever. I'm okay. And, and I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, it's okay. Um, I think, I think that the, um, I think that with that, um, little not non leaderless thing, uh, I also think that the Venus plan should also be um, involved in that. Venus plan? Venus project. Don't, not familiar. Um, well. Is it a long story? Sort of. Well, it's a, uh, it's a societal concept that does not use money, where it's instead of a, uh, let's see if I can explain this right, because I did some reading on it, but... Instead of a, um, instead of a, a, uh, like a monetarily based economy, it's a resource based mm -hmm. economy. Uh, mm -hmm. The theory being that there really is enough of everything to go around. Yeah, yeah. And that if it's not based on, well, you know, this costs a dollar nineteen and uh -huh. this costs a dollar twenty nine and whatever, that, you know, everybody would get everything they need and everybody would have a high standard of living. And there would be no poverty, right. um, but there would there would be no uh, uh, you know disparity either. And man, that takes huge vision to think that far yeah. ahead and, I, I and say, I just one thing about what we're talking. The dialogue about, has to happen. Name I mean, again. It's far reaching yeah. idea now. Hmm? It might not yeah. end up that way, but it, it's an alternative, you know. And it, you know, it's we've all been geared and pressed into this mold of, of capitalism and consumerism. Oh, absolutely! You know, to have an idea like that is it's a step in the right direction. Whether it's the end result, I don't know, but it's things talking about things like that. I think will eventually lead to a, a, a consensus, you know, other than what we're in now. And hopefully, that's what we're doing right here. Here's the big problem, right. though. I mean, I see it like up where I live, up where we live, up up in the foothills. There is like so much. I call it like, like deliberate numbheadedness. Yeah. I mean, there are people that will not. You know, there are people that'll come right out with a straight face and say, "No, I'm not for clean energy. No, I'm not for taxing the rich. No, I'm not." I mean, it's like, and where do they get their reasoning? I, I can't even. You know, that they are they are so so narrow minded, and and they have like. Their opinions are force-fed to them by the blowhards on Fox, and they, they don't even have an opinion except what they're told to think, and they just regurgitate it back. And, so, and some, if I, I may. I, I just wanted to say that I really want to try and move us away from the bitter complaints about the way things are. I know, you know? and from, like, labeling and pointing well, fingers. Well, not even that, I but know. The, it, it sucks, it's a disaster. I really wanted the, the idea of the vision group is to say let's talk about well where where would we like to go what would it look like what is the side when he's talking about town meeting Sink style she. democracy she <laughs> town town meeting style democracy where the town meet everybody gets used to going to town meetings everybody gets used to making their local decisions that we don't get decisions passed down to us by our representatives, we pass our decisions up to our representatives and they act on them. And if they don't, we take them back and bring them back and send somebody else in the community to do our will. Now that's radical democracy. 
but it changes everything. It changes the whole paradigm, which is what I'm seeking, is paradigm shifts in the form of government that we have. And paradigm shift means you got to think outside the box, you got to think radical and crazy, you got to throw out the craziest ideas in the world, and then eliminate them one by one, but look at everything first, consider everything first, say, what about this? And that's what we do better than almost any other group that I know of. Occupy has the openest mind, the most willingness to just say, well, okay, tell me what your story is about. We'll consider it. Anything. We're, we're open for business. This ain't working. If you got a better idea, bring it down. And that's a whole different attitude. And I think it's what's going to make this so powerful in the end. You know, We're only, what, four months old, five months old? We're not even six months old. And already... The, the ripples are, are going throughout the country and hopefully throughout the world. What I think is that the whole world is looking at America and saying, you guys started this whole thing and you've got the worst democracy of them all. The most unequal, the most unjust, the most inhumane, the most uncivilized. How can you be talking to anybody about democracy? And we ought to fix our democracy as a model for everybody to say, ah, they got it right. They got it right now. It took them 230 years, but they got it right. And it's up to us to make sure they get it right. And not say, well, it's too this, it's too hard, it's too up, it's too down, I can't do it. Say, this is our chance. The thing is, though, in order to, you know, in order to, like, take the next step and be a better society and be the, the society that we think it could be, we have to start reaching the mainstream. The people that, you know, the people that go, oh yeah, you know, why don't you just take a bath and get a job or whatever, you know, the people that just throw out all this this Fox well, you nonsense. You can't be preoccupied with those guys. And I, and I you can't be preoccupied with them. We can't let them drag us down into dealing no. with them. Let's think about the great, the good, the beautiful, and, and try and sweep aside all the negativity, all the cynicism, the damn cynicism that just ruins this country and say, oh, don't bother, it won't work. Oh, don't bother, it all sucks. That sucks, we all suck, we all suck. Ah, forget it. I hate that, it infuriates me. It's you giving in, you're saying, ah, screw it, I don't care. Well, somebody's got to care, and what I see, the only people in this country that I see really caring is Occupy. They care enough to put their bodies on the line. They're taking hits. They're saying, we, you can cut us down, but we're going nowhere. And the whole world is watching. And when you talk about impo impacting the media, they are watching. Everything we do, they're watching. And if we come up with something wonderful, there's just going to be no way for them to ignore it. And I th that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about... Start? Something wonderful. I'm sorry, please. Okay, so I just want to start by laying the foundation, which is that uh, our job as like humans and in a society is not to work against nature, but it's to work with it, you know? And the fundamental thing of a society, any society that, that wants to consider themselves good, has to obey the golden rule. And that is, do unto others as you would have do, done unto yourself. And the second thing that we need to realize, or third, is that everybody is different and everybody has different skill levels. So we need a flexible society where if I'm really good at making wagon wheels, I have the opportunity to go and make wagon wheels. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Please, somebody was back there. Come on, see the other hand. Daddy well, I want to make sure everybody has something well, to say. What do you got? You got anything to say back there? Uh, well, what's on your mind? We got research a long time, and it's finally, I guess, here. But it all comes down to centralization of power, centralization of monetary policies, central banks, mm -hmm. and you know, we can, and until that's handled, you know, I mean, you've heard. I, I, I mean, I've been watching the Occupy. Since it you know, started, where it's gone, and it's part of you know one of my jobs is to see what's going on in the financial industry and all that stuff. So it's, it, it, the problem is. Well, what would you suggest for Occupy? If you had 
If Occupy were listening, what would you recommend? Uh, well, everyone's you know, like individuals, and they all have their own concerns. <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, it's like when they want to come in and they want to try to label what Occupy is or label what someone's saying on mainstream media. Uh, but the only one that that relates to me because I I feel like you have to go to you have to cut the head off the snake. Boom, boom. You know, boom. it's like there's a lot of reptilians that will grow back. So if you do not get rid of central banking or the Fed and make it local banks, mm -hmm. then nothing's going to change because they're able to do, they're able to continually do uh, what, the, what that one guy said, and that is a uh, loan out. $100 for every $10 to put in the bank. Well, do you feel that Occupy isn't aware of that or isn't focused on it or doesn't pay attention I, I, to that? or Because it seems know. to me there's a, particularly Wall Street, those yeah. guys, that's all they think about. Right, and, well, and that's how everything seems to be. I mean, the Wall Street occupation, yeah. that so, group you know, is. Ending the Fed, but basically making, like you mentioned, a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift where individual realize that this world and why we're here isn't to be rich and wealthy in form, but in spirit. Right. And once that becomes, I think, an individual goal to be spiritually wealthy, then everything else will come. Yeah. But you can't, once you have, you know, the ability to take that side of human nature Fear, which I'm no, I don't have enough. I might not have enough. And then you, then you can funnel that into our politics. And then not only that, probably have uh, blackmail type situations where they're not going to serve you. The greatest elements of the great religions all share those things. And then there are fundamentalist groups that split off and create a crazy theology that's totally counter to that. And what some people are looking for now is reconciliation among all the great religions to realize that we're all part of the same desire and, and part of the same religion in, in a sense. All just aspects of one religion that cares for our fellow man, that cares about every person equally, that can't stand to have a fat Christian sitting next to a starving Christian. You go, well, that's just not Christian. Not the Christian that we understand. It's not the Islam that we understand. It's not the Buddhism that we understand. So, I think part of this means reconciliation so that we don't have the wars between the religions. That we find a way to reconcile them and embrace, embrace them. Okay. Well, it's just so hard to make to snap one's fingers and make religion go away. How do you do that? Well, can I just wanted to say something really quick. Oh. Oh. I don't like getting interrupted, so like I'm sorry. If you have something I'm sorry. To say, like, please let us know. I'm sorry. So, what I wanted to say was that uh, you know, spirituality, whether or whether it does, it, whether it does or whether it doesn't exist, you know, it's like it's kind of that's kind of hard to tell and stuff. And I think that something that's really important in a society is being able to tell what exists and what doesn't, you know? And kind of tying in what you were saying about fractional reserving system, where if a bank has $100, they can loan out $10,000. That's not real money, you know? And there are consequences to that monetary irresponsibility, you know? There are severe consequences to inflation. And so, like, whether or not spirituality exists, but it does something good for us, by thinking positive, you know, and it, and it, it does something positive for our society, then does it exist? Yeah, you know, you can say that it does, you know? But whereas fractional reserve, like, that's something that's clearly, like, has a bad, negative impact, you know? Uh, I had a better, but whatever. I'm just tempted to say that it, it gets complicated when we get out of the secular realm, kind of like the Egyptian spring saying, we don't want the religions in this, we don't want competing. It's a secular discussion, really, that we're talking about. It's 
human need, human community, human equality. You don't need a religion for that. You don't need. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Going back to keeping things out of Occupy. Can anyone say what sparked the initial Occupy movement? Maybe that guy who self-immolated himself in. Some people, a lot of people go back to that, but it started, like you say, 50 years ago, 50 years ago. Uh, well, the most recent, you know, the thing that, that we identify with, it started in Spain last spring. And what was the primary, well, there, there was a, there was a cause, they were effect of it. What was the actual cause? I think mostly it was tremendous inequality, the 1%, 99%. So that That's, has to do with... One percent ruling the people who have all the money ruling the world, and the ninety-nine percent catching the scraps and whatever is left over, and saying we can't do this anymore. What determines monetary policy? What determines monetary policy and what's going on? What determines it? <laughs> well, that's a complicated question. Belief in the economic system that means. Well. Right, but you know, I guess policies, you know, and so at some point, if like you were saying earlier, we the people are the ones that are supposed to direct our leaders doing what we want them to do. So without those people, which are unfortunately politicians, I don't know how you can separate the two. I mean, yeah, you can have oh, I, I like this guy, I like this guy, I like that guy, <coughs> but the fractional reserve banking and all that can only be changed through politics. It's oh, yeah. Or by, it's or by, by, the, by oh. us trying to get them to oh, change that. I, I'm, not, I'm not advocating that. Never mind. We drive so much fear of homelessness, fear of abandonment, fear of being without food, without insurance, without money, without a car, without drives us to Get a job, do what we gotta do, make money somehow that locks you into the system. Because if you don't, you're on the street for the rest of it. I, well, I, one of the things that drives fear, that causes the fear, is is the is the tendency, the reason that we need regulation, because there's this tendency to conglomerate that once somebody has a certain commodity and and, and is able to exercise some more control and get hold of more and more, there's, you know, there becomes an inequity and unfairness in the system. And so there need to be controls over um, that ability to monopolize and, and, you know, aggrandize a small segment of society. But the people who monopolize, if they're operating off of fear, what if they didn't operate off of fear either? Yeah, I'm not sure that they're Maybe operating they off be. of fear. I think they're more operating off of greed and, yeah. and egotism. And they can. Uh, they do it. They the can system. do it. You know? I think that uh, also, if we didn't live in a world, if we, you know, there'd be more entrepreneurship because a lot of people are afraid of starting a business and then failing and then having nothing, you know. And that's what, and that's why everybody goes to these corporations for jobs, you know, and nobody's starting up their own business because they're afraid that they're going to get run over. Well, fear, it's pandemic. We are a society that's just bathing in fear so much we hardly even notice it anymore because we're used to being terrified all the time and being motivated. Like, what if this happens? Oh, oh, just the television commercials that threaten your death and you're going to die and soon right. if you don't have the right insurance, damn, you're homeless. And every time you turn on the TV, it's scaring you to death. And you're going, well, and you know, you just change the channel. But day after day after day after day, that's part of the reason this country can't trust. We, we're terrified of each other. We're terrified of, of everything. And that's, that's why this vision thing is important. we got to start asking, how can we get past that? How can we get beyond that? And one of the things I'm thinking is our creating model communities for others to view for Occupy to create model communities that work the way we think that a model community should work with 
the radical de democracy where everybody involves. Yeah, Sean. <coughs> Well, I had a vision the other day. To occupy a farm, you know, that was, you know, occupy a farm, stay there, get 50 tents, get a sound stage, get volleyball courts, get, you know, and it's called um, the Western Occupy Symposium. And we invite everyone to come and visit, including some heavy-duty rock bands that will that will <laughs> have God. people going, who's showing up at the soundstage today? Well, uh, I hear Jackson Brown's coming, but I'm not sure. He called, maybe he'll be there, maybe he won't. <laughs> we can, we could create a community where people say, wow, what are they doing over at Occupy today? What's coming out of there today? And I, you know, it's that seemed very fanciful to me because it requires a farm and a thing and a what and a cooperation and but that's as realistic as a lot of things that happen every day and I don't see why we can't consider something like that. Sorry, I'm my eye, my yeah. peripheral <laughs> vision. Blind spot. Just yell at me, please, <laughs> David, please. <laughs> I do. I really like your question, and I think, and it relates to what you were saying, also, Robert. And I think, no matter what system we get, you know, whether it's a reform version of our current system, whether it's some, you know, functional, polite version of anarchy, whether it's a zeitgeist kind of thing, like no matter what system it is and what like structures that that spirit or, or that that emotional side of it needs to be there you know like if we're not working in a framework of some form of love instead mm -hmm. of fear mm -hmm. then any of those systems fail mm -hmm. you know any of them get corrupt because and greed is i feel a form of fear of and and it's i i tend to feel it's more greed for power in the, the long run you know you get a certain amount of money and then it stops working and then the power is what they really like you know and it feeds each other but um Yeah, and, you yeah. know, and, and fear is like systemic, and it's like self, you know, and it, once the ball gets rolling, you know, like, and the media just like blasts you every night, which is like, this person got raped, this person got killed, uh -huh. they you find know, some, this, 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 yep. just, like, should, should we, should they we, find some horrible and crime, saying, and they describe it in the most gruesome and I'm not detail, saying, and please, they don't, please, and I'm not saying, please, don't be please. like, don't tell us what's going on, you know what I mean? But it's like they always treat these things as isolated events that you and you have no control over. Them. You know what I mean? Should we should we like resolve to not watch mainstream media? As a, I mean, well, that could be dangerous. I don't, I don't, I don't watch it that you much. Know, you know, I mean, does anybody that, here that, watch mainstream right. media? <laughs> a little. So, so should that be like a, a statue we we adopt or something? We can be insulated from it. Well, so now I mean, on with the internet, there's there's lots of Lamborghini. <laughs> Green in action. <laughs> I, was, I was born a day. It's not going to be in my life. Uh, oh, the change. But um, no, uh, you know, with, with the internet, you know, there's plenty of news resources where it's not. I mean, there's, there's plenty of alternative news. So, I mean, I don't know if this group is going to come up with. Uh, this is suggestions for what a new society is like. But that, I mean, I think spirituality. Is a good is a good thing if there is going to be a list. Replacing fear with love is, is a good good thing that would go on there, and maybe a more tangible one is just denouncing mainstream media, not denouncing you know uh, news and, and paying attention to what's going on, but finding it from a, a source that is not based on fear, a source that is based on love. You know, and, 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 I and don't think though. I mean. I think it's good to like be skeptical of mainstream media. Absolutely, I am. I watch CNN a little bit, but mostly I get my information off the Occupy websites. But I don't think we have any place to start making rules like that to say, "Oh, well, you're not one of us if you watch, you know, Channel 13 or whatever," because it is supposed to be all inclusive and and you know where anybody can participate and where everybody feels welcome. And that's one of the things that I love about it is that. It's not, 
you don't have to join something or be a member of something or sign some form or have little closed door meetings like some sneaky little club. It's all like just right out here on the streets for anybody that comes by is free to participate. And that's, I think, we got to keep that that purity like that. Yes. Well, well, I, I agree. And but based on that also, that could list, you talk of, just a bit louder? The list of suggestions could, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> the list of suggestions could include where those sources of media are. Like, there's lots of media out there that doesn't print, doesn't write, doesn't look at stories based in fear. It's based on love, meaning I really want to understand this. And one story could take 20 pages to really, really explain why, like, the, uh, the Baltics blew up or what's going on in the Middle East, like, pages. And by the time you're done, everyone is so humanized and our compassion back. And, and when I used to read it a long time ago, I referenced it all the time in everything that I what, what is that you're referring to? Christian Science Monitor. You know, and they'll take they'll take some stories, like maybe three stories for each issue. It's a lot of work that they do, but I know that they're coming from a place of, of education, not sensationalization or trying to control people and make sure they don't fly. You know, because airlines are involved in it too. Fly here, don't fly here. You know. We so it's a trustworthy resource for. I believe that it was. Those folks, they 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 looked at both all sides of the issue and it's it's a bit of a read you know to yeah and, yeah just, yeah and another thing like there's a huge difference between the morning talk shows of news and then like the late night talk shows like you know what i mean in the morning it's like good day sacramento hey it's gonna be a great day you know here's my sweater vest <laughs> see in the background there's like a fireplace and we're ready to wake up and start the day um, my, lovely. my my fiance watches that show I got faithfully you. and then yeah. at yeah. night they just <laughs> bitch slap you into freaking dropping your serotonin levels and it's just like you're so tired after work and then they just hammer into you like how terrible the world is Seriously. go to sleep <laughs> so, yeah. the, uh, I feel like Profitable. No matter what we're like, no matter what type, types of changes we're looking for, there I feel like there's two ways to go about it. Like there's one way of having like a big revolution where we take out the existing structure and there's a void and uncertainty essentially of what will follow. Um, and the other way that I know of, and I hope there's more, but <laughs> these two basic modes, like one is outgrowing, is like creating the new system separately, and then it reaches a critical mass, it's proved it, its worth, and we can shift to it. And, and similar to like trying to export democracy with guns and stuff, like that's not how we should do it, you know? Like, and so like trying to like ban, you know, we, we should resist mainstream news and, and stuff, but I see like the alternative news is already starting to like outgrow it. Yeah. You know, the, the, the trust in, in the mainstream is gone. Like one of my favorite sources, the Cor uh, James Corbett with the Corbett Report, yeah, like, he's been doing his little independent thing, just searching for truth for four years, like, while teaching English in Japan, <laughs> and and now he's, like, a regular on Russia Today, and he's got, like, he's, he's, he's really getting he's a foothold. Good. Yeah, he's gone full-time. And I agree with you, like, the trust in mainstream media is, like... Yeah, it, it's record low. I've seen that channel, though, Russia Today. James Corbett. And, and to, to respond to, to what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, it's not our place to say... Don't watch that media. They're they're not in the club, you know. And, and then also to tie into what you were asking about earlier, how do you how do you talk to people that are you know ignorant of what's going on and proud to be ignorant? And, and I think the answer to that in both to both of those is, is em, you have to empathize with them. You really really have to. And that should probably be number one. If there is a list of a new society. I, that, I think that's got to be number one. And from you know to, to get to the point where you can even begin to empathize with other people. And empathize with yourself. The language has to change. Good. Confrontational language prevents empathy. Right. But I, think, uh, I like, have trouble with that. Uh, I am we all do. very we've guilty been, of we've, that. We've, we've somebody, been, yeah, we've, it's been beaten into it. Uh, I mean, you just go Nobody like, dude, uh, where, where do you get this shit? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but, but and, there's got to be a more right, diplomatic it, way to right, communicate. You, you know, and, and uh, Tiffany, who who has since you know left left has Occupy, she yeah, she, she yeah she's left Occupy, but she was a big proponent and still is of uh, NBC nonviolence communication.
communication and, and helping people to empathize with others. And Why did she leave? Uh, it goes, it goes, it goes, she actually responded, I sent her an email and she, uh, she responded and it, and it goes towards um, Occupy kind of skipping the first two steps of uh, creating a new society, you know, and, and that is, you know, speaking to each other in, in a new context, you know, being able to empathize with each other, and then asking the question, what is a good society? She had great hopes for this group because it seemed like it was you know, taking two steps back and trying to answer those things. But uh, her fear was that Occupy was jumping straight into a reform of the current system, which wouldn't really fix anything. And when uh, some of the other committees started to, um, you know, really take strides in, in, that, in that idea of let's reform things, and she, she just felt that her time would be spent better elsewhere. So Tiffany is one that is out have, creating these dialogues. I mean, 40, 50 years ago, there was people out starting the dialogues that now are, are the, the normal mindset of, of these people in the Occupy movement. So Tiffany is now out starting the new dialogue. And she's a big proponent of empathizing. And I think that that should be something we all try. We can all do individually. We don't have to, you know, have meetings, you know, but it should be in the new dialogue. We should. I don't know how to, I mean, you have to learn to empathize. You have to learn well, You have to it's learn. It's a skill set. Like, Actually, rats empathize. They've done studies, and huh. if rats can do it, they can do it too. What's that? Rats, they did a study about rats. Uh, and rats. Okay. And they found that rats empathize. A rat, a rat will, will turn away from food to try to rescue another trapped rat. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Taya, come back over here. You're too far away. And, and so I figure we should be able to do that. I, <laughs> I, I do think that, um, you know, I'm really sorry Tiffany's not here. Tiffany, I, I was really into what she was, um, you know, putting forth, and I was really learning from her intermittently. Um, and, and I hope that, I mean, I know that, you know, in fact, I worry. I like to worry, so fear is part of my thing. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> um, that, you know, something's going to happen and that's going to make me feel a distance and I'm going to feel like I can't be part of it. But I think we have to try to guard against that because everybody's coming from, from different, you know, backgrounds and points of view and everything else. And, and so I think, I don't think we should overlook those things. But I do think we should kind of forge on, even, you know, if somebody, if some group is going too fast in some way, we should try to influence them, maybe if we feel like they're doing something that is, you know, antithetical or, or going to lead us in a wrong direction. But, but I hope we can all keep hanging in there, um, and I hope Tiffany comes back. Yes. <clears throat> She's not dead. She just... I just... What's... Keeps coming back is um, love-based society. Now that's that's the most radical concept in the world. I mean, it's just totally different than what we've got. It's 180 degrees from what we have, and yet it seems so obvious and so it's so obvious that that's the the answer to the equation. Is instead of competing with each other, hurting each other, defying each other, being angry. We should all love each other, understand each other, be patient with each other, be like in one big great family where we understand and cooperate and no, no one is fat while someone else is thin. We all share, we all, you know, do things that families do for each other. That's the most radical concept in the world. That's, those people in those buildings start throwing up when you start talking like that. That would ruin everything if we start loving each other. And yet, that's most progressive movements get down to. I mean, back in the '60s, that's a, we said, let's just uh, boil it down to this: all you need is love. If you just love each other, everything else takes care of each other uh, itself. And John Lennon and everybody else, they said, it's naive, it's stupid, it's silly. We're all a bunch of flower children, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's true. It would solve everything if we just learned to love each other and taught love instead of hate. Why did it happen? Because we were naive and weak and got squashed and shot and our heads how blown we, off. And how do we prevent that from happening again? Because I think we're smarter. We learn from what happened. 
We're not so naive as the flower children were. We saw what happened if you just, you know, walk up and say, oh, please like me, you get a, you know, butt of a rifle in your face and say, uh, forget it. Well, we have to be smarter and better. And there's more of us, more, many more. That was a tiny minority compared to what's happening now. I'm sorry. Well, there's another concept. It's not so much being better or smarter, but while the population is under the under the oppression of fear, there are there are people who actually benefit from conflict. And when you're what you're saying about people inside a building going, oh hell, don't we'll start loving each other. Whatever level of fear we think we're operating under, they're operating under a whole nother orbit. <laughs> a whole nother mm -hmm. electron orbit of fear mm -hmm. that a lot of us don't even identify with. And so in terms of being empathetic, I mean, if we're going to really do this as a globe, as a world, it means, I think, my opinion is, it means raising that level of empathy to that level mm -hmm. of fear. And really, really appreciating it and, and honoring it in some way, or at least respecting it, like you respect a wild animal when you're backed up against the cage. You don't, you don't run, you don't, you know, shoot back at it, but you respect it, you know, and, and that takes some time. So well, we're looking for a revolution of, of consciousness. At least that's what we were talking about yeah. back in the... You can't revolution... You have to... Re the whole consciousness, that's why we were doing consciousness raising. Everything was consciousness raising. This and that, we're, con we're raising consciousness. Which basically meant to escape the old ways, the old ways you're thinking, and start thinking bigger and grander and more loving and more inclusive and more playful and more happy and, you know... And that's all we're left with, really, is... How do we learn to do love? How do you do love? We can talk about it, but how do you do it? And how would a society do love? How do, what would a loving society look like? And how would you teach it? You'd teach it starting with babies. They'd be learning love from the minute they come out of the womb, and they'd be... Lead by example. We, just, we have to learn to love better, or what hope? You know, what hope? Well, we do teach our kids, you know, we tell them share and don't hit each other and be nice and be polite. It's like we kind of, on some level, we, we hope that maybe our kids will be better people than we were. But Otherwise, our society, what is our society doing to our children? What is our educational system doing to our children? <laughs> we don't have any control over it. Uh, one one aspect I feel is that um, is like the fear. This is this is just like one way I feel one easy way we can start to outgrow and outmaneuver the the fear structures <laughs> um, is the fear generated just by marketing and and saying like you will not be happy unless you have X Y and Z and and it's all bullshit you know uh, so I feel like. I did like what the, that one man who was here last week talking about boycotts. He was very focused on boycotts because I do think that is important. You know, the the less we feed these beasts, we despise. You know, uh, uh, with Correct. love. <laughs> you know, we, we have to defund. We have to defund the system while while building our own thing. You know, so if that means, you know, logically saying, oh well, if I if I save a couple bucks going to Walmart and. I'm enslaving these people over there. They may go to war with me someday. It's cheaper to, you know, buy something local that costs twice as much, you know. And, and, and starting to get to that level and, and, and just, you know, really resisting those those, those fears that are really unnecessary. Like, really unnecessary. Totally not for survival. Well, right. And I think a huge part of uh, showing love is also knowing your time into is not being afraid. And everyone is afraid these days. Um, everything from what the media feeds us, you know, be afraid of the terrorists, be afraid of this or that, you know, uh, be afraid of the people who are trying to overturn the system that protects you and feeds you, you know, but uh, also, like, in my case, I don't make barely enough money except to eat at food that I get at Walmart or any other major business. I can't afford to even eat locally, and a lot of people can't, and, uh, mm -hmm. We need to create a system where, and not just a system, but 
a series of teachings to try to give people the experience or the understanding so that they don't have to be afraid of things. And then also so we can not be afraid when we want to do things that are civil rights, such as, example, sitting in a park. Don't be afraid of the police, you know, stand your ground when you need to. If, if something's a human right and it's being violated and intentionally and forcefully oppressed by the police, then most people are just going to always be afraid to have their human right. I'm afraid of the police. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've not been arrested with Occupy, but I've been arrested and put in jail for something that I didn't do, and that even if I had done it, it shouldn't have been a jail-worthy offense anyway. <laughs> And and um, you know so I so I've been unjustly arrested and jailed for bullshit and yeah I'm afraid of the police. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're fool, if you're not. But that's one of the things that makes creates this culture of fear. The police, a fearsome, scary, militarized, violent police force that's there, that any time can put a bullet in your head and just say, well, you're a, you know, you look like you made a move for that wallet, and I don't know. And if that doesn't make the whole society afraid, just seeing those black and whites go by and seeing the guys in the military uniforms and the shields and whatever, that's intended to make you f afraid. For this society to stop being afraid, we have to dismantle that. <coughs> we have to have a nonviolent police force. We have to take all of that trooper mentality and say, that goes with Mubarak in Egypt. We don't play that way anymore. Right. But... I... Okay, uh... I just want to go back to like marketing and stuff. What you were saying. Sorry to get back off point or whatever, but I've been a, it's been a while. Uh, but it seems to me like there's two different people. There's those who are completely aware of just like the assholes that are trying to sell them something, and then there's a person who's like, "Oh my god, I totally need that. I'm so unhappy without like my avocado peeler." <laughs> and it's like I want to know what is the difference between me and you to where I. Ha where, you know what has happened in my life, or, or you know what experience has 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 given me this ability to say I don't need that, and <coughs> there's no ma no matter how hard you try and sell this to me, I will not buy it. But if you order now, we'll send you two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, I think there's oh sorry. Who is first? I don't know. Sean. Sean, Sean was pretty yeah. good. So uh, going along with fear and love, uh, and I don't. We set up, Occupy sets up all these actions, it seems like every week or two there's a new action, and it just, I see a blip about it, and then it disappears, and no one shows up for it, and nothing really happened. And I see that all the time. Uh, I don't get how we didn't actually follow through with the real action. Just recently, there's a huge article, it was on the news, mainstream news by the way, as well as the front page of the SAC B, that the police department this year, since January 1st, have policemen have killed more people than they have in an entire year every yeah. year for the yeah. last six years. Wow. Here in Sacramento. Here in Sacramento, yeah. In Sacramento. yeah. yeah. They've killed six people this year. Their average per year is five. They've already maxed yeah. out their quota. They, they're, they're not wow. allowed to kill anyone. They're trained militarily. <laughs> they they so, if you look, they get funds from not the not feds. Incidentally, just last year, the, um, the DA publicly made a public oh. announcement Talk that they're going to stop investigating oh. police murders. What? Yes. Well, they've been doing that for a long because time. every time they've investigated them, they've always checked out. So they, they made a public thing, we're going to stop investigating them. Suddenly their amount of murders goes way the fuck up. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. So, See, it's not too far from here to Syria. <laughs> yeah. Please, please. So, back on the topic of um, what's the difference between me and thee or... Uh, one of the comments you made earlier is like one of the things on that suggestion list is working with nature and and Speak up having a having a more of a resistance to the marketing or more of a resistance to the fear. There's this book that I've been reading and it's taking me a long time because I realize it's more than just a how-to book. I feel like I'm raising myself again. It's called um, Above All Else Be Kind and it's written by a mother who really wanted to know how am I going to raise my kids so that they're empathetic and they're working with nature and they have a sense of analysis. So it's like a sense of analysis by the time they're five. Mm -hmm. So when they're going, if they're going to go into mainstream schools, they have a sense of discernment about is this teacher right or like wrong? Is this a classroom? And then that power to be able to come home and articulate to the parent 
this is what's going in the, on in the classroom. <laughs> and I don't think it's a good environment for me and something can be done about it. Being able to, to, to ask questions. And, and I really like the way she lays it out. It's all age appropriate. So the very early, early years, it's about experience. And not even worrying about articulating and not worrying about analysis. And then it's about exposure to experiences and, and starting to generate the questions. What are you seeing? And not just answering them for the child. And so, like I said, I'm still raising myself because the list of like, well, here's some things that parents could have done. It's like, yep, I didn't get that one. I didn't get that one. <laughs> I must be doing something right then because my kid does that. She she analyzes and questions and and has. You know, and 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 she doesn't just she doesn't just like accept what's force fed to We've her. We've seen her in action. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hear a lot of boycott and resist, and, and from what I've learned is, uh, I'm sure you've heard whatever you resist persists, mm -hmm. and if you haven't, that's it, you can go up on any website and see you know the phrase catchphrase but it is true the more you resist and fight the harder things become so just awareness of those commercials and awareness of you know how how things are happening around you and, and just the awareness and, and understanding and not fighting against it but you're right I mean ever since I was young I I never those commercials drive, drove me crazy you know and uh, when I was growing up, we had like five stations for 20 years, you know, so now it's just ridiculous. So it's even harder to f have, one, the time, you know, the energy to search for the correct or, or what information befits you. Like, um, the, the issue in love, I, it brought me right to this book that, you know, if, if everyone lived by this one book alone... <laughs> Uh, you would see a total shift in consciousness, and it's a book by Don Miguel Ruiz called *The Mastery of Love*. And, and then there's an also uh, *The Coming of, of the New Consciousness Here on Earth*, and it's by Eckhart Tolle. If, if anyone's ever heard of that person, so I mean, all you can do is deal with your own consciousness, and then it'll, you know. And when when someone says something about politician who you know or whatever that you just know is just like where'd you get that information you just kind of go is that so you know you, instead of resisting that because then that creates that wall of uh, of um, yeah there is no empathy anymore I mean it just because now you're right and I'm wrong or you're telling me I'm wrong and 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 so it's more of if like I did see that in some of the interviews with Wall Street, which like they were just really saying we don't want to take on a label, we don't, and, and that's the the correct thing. But you know, from what I understand, people are in the streets because they realize they've been stolen from, and that's it. They've been stolen from, and how they get it back is through inflation, more taxes, more fees, more fines, more everything, and it's going to fund. We're funding these wars, so, I mean, period. We're funding them with our tax dollars, and we're also... Uh, funding them with our, our nieces and nephews and sons and daughters. And exactly, and, and so, the, so, if you, so that's why I'm like, okay, well, here's the top of the quote pyramid. It's centralized banking. Whoever's, you know, you can go deep, and, you know, some people are into that, and I... But centralized banking and... Fractional reserve lending. This country just um, prospered when everything was on the standard, that the, the gold standard, because they could not. You can't print gold. You can't print silver. You can't. It's objective. Right. So, you know, dumping all that money in the system, they basically got the bailout, which is your money, and then now they're getting the homes that people couldn't afford anymore. So they're getting everything for free, and. That's how it's basically the system in the you know it's a private Fed is a private you know company. So I see my role in this conversation to keep us focused on the vision of how we want things to be. I see one of the problems we're struggling with is getting into a granular this problem, that problem, this solution, that solution, this solution. <laughs> 
and saying, well, that's a good solution, but I think I've got a better solution. And we, we end up in a struggle for who's got the best idea, the best solution. And I'm trying to get us to see beyond that to say, how do we want it to be? What do we want it to look like? If we're going to raise people's consciousness, to what? Raise it to what? And we have to have a clear vision of what that is if we're going to present it to the world. And we don't. We don't have a clear vision because we're still in the process of working that out. And that's what this is about, is working that out. So we come to some kind of consensus amidst all the things that are wrong, the, all the problems. We can't say, well, this is it. This economic system or this problem with the banks. I, I resist all of that to say, I don't want to hear the granular details of what's wrong with our society. It's right in my face. I want to talk about what's going to be right about society when we show the vision of a better society. In order to get to I that think, big I, picture, I, I, go ahead. I, I think uh, I think some of the things that would be right about our new society is that everyone is educated. I mean, you know, being like you were saying. Being able, just being aware of, of what's around. I mean, most, a lot of people. I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people don't even know how to read a nutrition label on on food that's that, that, that's in the grocery stores. A lot of people don't understand that you can turn down the commercial when it's on TV. You know, and I don't. I I want to see in in a, in a new society. You know, people that want to educate their children, you know, an entire society that wants to see the entire populace educated, because right now we don't live in that. Right now we live in a society where the 1% only wants their close people, their friends, their relatives, their families to be educated. They don't want the masses to be educated. So I want a new society that, that wants everyone to be educated, and I, and I also want, I want to see a society where people take part in the democracy, where voting is not on one obscure day you know and from these hours to these hours but it's a week-long party for everybody to go out <laughs> and vote and right. you know yeah. and the month prior you're not getting your information on on tv by ads but you're 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 going to town meetings and you're talking about it you know and I, that's that's what i want to see out of aren't they society. required to vote in australia yep and they get 98 percent 98 percent turnout why, why, why don't I, we have yeah, that? I, I it's because that. Republicans do not want well, I, big turnout. I'm sorry. They are about. Let's stick with your own rules. Let's stick with your own rules. They don't want us voting. That's a label. It's a personal. It's a personal thing. I'm sorry. It's in ground. When you say though that um, that we shouldn't have a bunch of what you call granular ideas, I disagree. I think. In order to get a big picture idea of what we want to see, we have to take we have to build it out of a whole bunch of little ideas. It's not like just this beam of light is going to come down and oh, we're going to have a new vision. It has to be built from everybody's you know from know, everybody's absolutely. input. Absolutely, yeah. I think you're just saying that's, that's, going, that's step two. Been, right? Right? Right. On step one is like what is the city of Oh. Uh, Sorry. Okay, so first of all, I totally agree with your idea, uh, 100%. I think education is first and foremost in a thriving piece of society. Um, something I want to see in a society is I think people just need, like, everybody has their job, their niche, something they do, even if it's just an art or a talent or anything. Everybody has a skill set, something that they can contribute to society and society would appreciate. And I think there's enough people and everybody has enough different kinds of skill sets. The society would thrive if instead of us trying to figure out how to manipulate um, our skill set in the system so that we can get the most out of it, if we would just go into it offering our skill set to everybody who needed it and everyone else offering theirs back to us so that we could all can just live, you know, and be happy. But when you're always trying to get out of it when you can, then creates problems for other people because then they're getting less, you know. It's that cooperative versus competitive kind of society and it learning to be a cooperative society is tough. It's not easy. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. I'm sorry. Actually, I started a business in 2005 based on that and it was partly an experiment to see yeah. if I could survive and it was it is still successful. Wow. Meaning I 
it's a it's really complicated because I do any everything that I really like to do, and I and whatever the, the client wants me to do, that makes me happy yeah. and makes them happy, and keeps the police happy. You know, so I'm not doing anything that's you know yeah. too off the off the mark. But it doesn't matter because if we're doing something that, that the client feels happy and I feel happy, it doesn't matter how much money. You know, and yeah. it never did. And somehow, I was taken care of. You know, it doesn't matter. And I know that if my needs, you know, increased, somehow the work would increase, or there's something would shift. And every year, my like nature of my work would shift, like with the seasons or a flavor. So that I ended up plugging into something that was like an undercurrent of energy of need, and then filling the niche. And I completely, completely, absolutely based on experience. Agree with you. Awesome. Um, I'd like to add to that, like, I've been doing construction since I lost my last construction job two and a half years ago. I've just been doing side jobs for the last two and a half years, and I do it for just as much money as I need to eat for the rest of the month, or for bartering, or sometimes for nothing at all, and I'm still alive, I'm doing just fine, and my customers are awesomely happy, and I'm happy, and I'm proud of the work I get to do, so. You seem happy. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it's really important to do what you love, you know, like, that's, like, and, and I just wanted to quote. What you're good at. Yeah, yeah. We all have talent, and we all have something that we want to do, and it's like we should we should be allowed to do it. And that's why education is really important. You know, nobody should make a I in in a perfect society that that I see, no one should make a profit off of keeping someone stupid or keeping somebody unhealthy or arresting people or keeping people locked up, <laughs> keeping people yeah. down. Be able to make a real profit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, definitely. that's something that we. Yeah, exactly. A conflict of human of interest with humanity, and it's it's not only selfish, but if you keep say say I am making a, a bad product and I'm keeping someone who can make a better product uh, from making a better product, it's making a, a, a like not making a better mousetrap. And you know, General Electric had, or uh, GM had the G the EV1, which was an electric <laughs> car, and they killed it, and then we bailed them out. But they had the opportunity to build a better mousetrap, and they didn't. And it's sort of that thing. And then uh, I wanted to quote Kurt Cobain. Well, it was not really Kurt Cobain because it was a cover song. But he said, there's nothing on top but a bucket on, and a mop, you know, and an illustrated book about birds. And he's and he's talking about, like, there's a perfect place called the Plateau. And, like, the work was fun, you know, cleaning up the, this plateau. And that's all you really need, you know. You just need, like, the work has to be fun. And that's paradise. That's not work. I, li- I like to travel a lot, though, and airplane tickets cost money. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, in this new society, I still want to be able to travel. So how do we, I mean, can I, I, will, can I work for a pilot? <laughs> we should find a way that. so that everybody you know, yeah, a value would have access to work to the value the beginning of the FFA. Also, you know. <laughs> well, make clean our airplanes. Huh? Well, make clean our airplanes. Yeah. 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 The, the one problem is <laughs> just find out. It's just a confounding problem, of, you know, the bell-shaped curve. Half of our population has an IQ under 100, half over the 120, 130, 140, 150s. They go to get the master's degree, get the doctorate, blah, 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 run the country. It's kind of what's called intellectual oligarchy. The smartest people that get the big degrees run the country, and the people who don't either end up homeless or in prison. What system of government would make a, a niche, a social niche for everyone, no matter their intellectual ability, no matter, and give everyone a, a, a acceptable standard of living, even if they're picking up you know, paper in the park because I, that's the, I think the only that thing that they can do. Question. I think that question goes real, real deep. You know, because you know, having graduated recently uh, from college and, and being exposed to the education system at a high level and, and befriending people with doctorate degrees, you know, I think that they forget a lot that they are at that upper end of the bell curve. And that there is a sense of, of intellectual uh, superiority. superiority, and they, you know, you know, people within the education system like to kind of think of themselves as, as the, the 
you know, they help society, you know, but if, if they are partaking in, in a, uh, you know, what was the word again? The, uh, well, intellectual, the intellectual oligarchy or the... They, I don't, are they aware of it? I don't, I don't know. I don't see it as a, I don't, I don't see it as a bad thing though. I see them as their their time spent performing a service, you know, is more valuable and it's manifested in a higher paycheck. You know what I mean? And that is why it's really important to have, uh, you know, very accessible education so that someone on this end of the bell curve can can work and, and labor to to achieve a higher level of education so they can make more money if they choose to. A lot of people are happy. You know, uh, just not going to college and, and getting, you know, just making enough money, you know what I mean? Some people, low normal intelligence, should not be in college, could not be in college, could not pass yes. what it required to get yeah. into college. And, and this society says, well, screw you. You're on your own, bud. You can't, you can't make the grade, so you don't, in a meritocracy, you do not merit the big paychecks. In fact, you don't even merit a standard of living. And I say that there's something wrong with that. I agree. But sure, go ahead. And that's why entrepreneurship is very important. Well, a 93 IQ person is not going to be your entrepreneur. Not in he this may society. not be not able to function beyond the level of a certain menial task. I think he ought to be paid a standard of living that he can live on. Even though he doesn't have an IQ of 150. Okay. Okay, I got a couple points. First of all, I think IQ tests are bullshit. Well, I think you know that uh, that's uh, that's yeah. part of the that is part of why the pig system is all fucked up in the first place is because they put people into these categories and they go, "You're smart, you're stupid," and it and it's and it's always the kids from the you know wrong side of town that get labeled as stupid. Okay. And and second, you know, okay college like a university education and being book smart is not for everybody anyway they used to have industrial arts courses in the sure. high schools they used to have auto shop wood shop metal shop sure. machine shop all this uh, now california is the worst for that they've gotten rid of that and they say oh well we're not an industrial society anymore we're an information society which is another train load of bullshit and meaningless <laughs> means nothing and it's just something they say to you know to separate and categorize people and uh so i mean you know the, the whole thing of of going to you know going to some prestigious college and being a scholar no that's not for everybody but no that doesn't make you stupid either and there need to be other alternatives and there used to be more and now there's less I like Sean was saying, you know, everybody has a skill set, you know, and whether you're smart or not, you know, if you're a hard worker then, and you have a skill set, you should be able to apply it in a field that, that pertains to you, you know, and if you're not making enough money off of that, then you need to start your own business that's profitable enough to where you can. Yes, please. It's, it's been my belief that intelligence doesn't doesn't determine success at something if you like it. If you like doing what you're doing, it becomes your gift to the world. And sometimes it's like something that's so obscure becomes the brightest gift. And a person, it doesn't, it's not measured by intelligence, it's measured by engagement and heart and, and focus because a person can't help it. You know, like a lot of a lot of well, you know celebrities and stars. A lot of them that are most successful, they were starting out at four and five. We forget that you know media makes it to be like oh media made them that way. But there's a lot of people who have been working at it their entire lives and back far into their childhood because they couldn't help but do it. And so, to me, the difference between somebody who does that, regardless of whether their passion is learning or teaching or brain surgery or cleaning or whatever, is confidence. To be able to say, I'm going to go forward and I'm going to do this. And what I, what I want to see in terms of a vision of the future is no more judgment. No more believing that one role is any more important than another role. So the whole idea of status should just go away. Or like, you know, more human being or less human being. And if and if I know that I would have developed confidence a lot more earlier in my life 
if I wasn't so susceptible to people people's judgments about, well, you shouldn't do that, you should be aiming towards this, you should be aiming towards these higher monetary, because then you'll be more important, or you'll be valued by society more, and I don't think that that should be true. Our values are... I, I want to see the work ethic to be a, a foundation, a fundamental thing of the society. I think that that sense of entitlement has pervaded this, our society, and Thing. I, I think that the depression or recession or whatever you want to call it is changing that, you know, but unfortunately it took, you know, we lost, we lost the idea that you have to work for whatever, whatever you're going to get, you know, whatever your skill set is, whatever you want out of life, you have to work for it, you have to work for it, and if you do, you will be rewarded, I mean, you don't have to be the smartest person if you're the hardest worker, you know, and, and you should, you should want to work hard. You should want to do whatever you're doing. You should want to do it to the best of your ability. That, you know that should be something that's, that's taught to the children and all throughout, you know, childhood and all throughout education and all the, everywhere. You know, the strong work. And here's the thing, though. Okay, first of all, I mean, yeah, I agree with you in principle, but you know, I mean, I think in a way. You know, I mean, I don't want to say like I'm anti-work, because I'm not, but we are taught in this society that, oh, your job defines you, and that you better be willing to come in on your days off and skip your breaks and do everything to be all about your job and miss your kid's childhood and miss everything else, and, and you know, and that's work ethic, work ethic, work ethic, work ethic. Well, the, you know, the 1%, they don't fucking work. I, you know, I, 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 like, and, I like that. I, I, think, <laughs> I think the, the term work ethic... Needs probably a new definition. Yeah. It'll have a new definition in a society without fear. Yes, yeah. indeed it would. <laughs> I, I fall into that, you know, kind of working for free on days, you know. I Take a shot. Start uh, talking or you'll sorry. never talk. Sean? Shout oh, it out. I just want to say real fast, oh. uh, it was awesome conversation. Keep the meetings going. I love what you guys are talking hey, will about. Would this be a, online, the video? Yeah. yeah. Do you know how to find it? I don't. Where's the video at? Um, because I think other groups need to see yeah. it. Yes. I, I, I always post it to Facebook out. and the forum, um, okay. if nowhere else. And if an action is happening, and I know about it enough in advance, I'll be good. The last yeah. two were pretty good too. I hope those are online. Is there a new series? series? I didn't get the first yeah. one online, but the last one I did. Did someone do a group email or anything? It comes back to physics. Um, not for this one. Yeah. Okay. Physics, yeah. physics says you can't get something from nothing. Or as my teacher, my teacher even put it in these terms. This is a direct quote. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You know what I mean? And over there, like you know, they're they're feeding the homeless over there, and it's like somebody had to pay for that soda. You know, someone had to pick the apples. You're still thinking in kind of, uh, I mean, pardon me, but it still kind of seems like you're thinking in that kind of capitalistic thought pattern. You know, well, the money had to come from somewhere. The money, the money, the money. I, I like the idea of just just thinking beyond the money. Just, just yeah. you know, because yeah. I hear that all day. Yeah. I hear When I'm doing my petitions... We have, we have some that are very Occupy friendly that are about taxing the rich and clean energy and stuff like this. And, you know, these people up here in Placerville, that's the first thing, they, that's the first, well, how much is that going to cost? Who's going to pay for that? Is that, you know, is that going to come out of my taxes? The money, the money, the money. Fuck the money. Yeah, it's a, see, it's no. nothing. It's, okay, it's I want to hear fuck from money. Oh, country here. Well, it's paper now. <laughs> I don't respect it. Shout it I out I treat now. it with contempt. <laughs> I'll get rid of it as soon as I, I get it. Well, work and um, missing their children's childhood and stuff like that. What he said about that, well, there was this one show that he was watching that was about where where the president will be in limos and stuff. Say again loud. We were watching this one show. What's that last part? Oh, okay. Well, it was about, um, it was about where the president will be if... Like Luminos arrived. Oh, the president. Anyway, um, what he said, and somewhere along there, um, they were interviewing the guy. You know how sometimes they get a little spot on Anyway, um, this guy said, if you're, if you're choosing between family and this, and this job, I choose this job. 
<laughs> Say again. Repeat that for me. Someone else. Oh, she's talking about. Um, all right, Taya. Yeah, all right. <coughs> Go ahead. Just that that phrase loud enough so I can hear it. Well, somewhere along that show. Um, And that's kind of sad, right? That's sad. I wanted, thank, thank you, Robert. I wanted, I wanted to follow up with uh, Matt talking about physics and then um, how, how you're saying, you know, it's not about money, fuck money, you know. Um, you know, yeah, the lunches aren't free. Um, it doesn't have to be about money that got it there, but it is about uh, energy. Um, and what physics, sa what physics says is um, nature tends to its lowest energy state. And so, when you when you want to do something, when you want to do anything, if you want to if you want to pick up a piece of clay and mold it, you know that that requires energy. If you want to provide lunches for people, it, t it takes energy to do that. And you're it's an uphill battle in, in a sense, not not maybe not a battle because you know you can get enjoyment out of it, but it is you are going up the energy scale. You are you are putting energy into the system to get anything done. And this, there's, a, there's a saying that everybody knows, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. And that can tie into physics because to, to do a good deed requires energy and there's friction along the way. So that, that punishment is, is the friction that you feel as you're putting energy into the system to get a good deed done. And there's almost no way around that due to physics, you know. But it doesn't mean you don't do good deeds. It doesn't mean you know that you that you stop and then you give in and then you just accept nature and you sit at your lowest energy level. It means it means that more people help and put in the energy and that and that when you when you're when you're met up there at, at the top that the, you have raised the energy level for, for everybody and there'll be less friction if, if if it's spread out amongst other people to push up that energy level. So it doesn't money isn't isn't necess, money is represents you know yeah. how you get things there but really what it is is energy and, and going <laughs> at time and time right but it does energy. betray when there's something wrong with the system that we have 400 the top 400 billionaires in our society have more wealth than the bottom 150 million people now you got to look at that and say i don't know how you cut it but that's wrong. Because they're the ones getting the free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're the ones yeah. Yeah. with the that, friction. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. exactly. And we in push fact, them up the hill. there's something wrong <laughs> with there being a thousand billionaires in this society. Alongside homeless, hungry children exactly. living in packing crates. You say, you there's something wrong with our society. That's, I think, what exactly. you occupy. When you it's, we're based on that emotion saying the billionaires are starving the children and killing exactly. them and they, it has to stop and we have to start by thinking how can we get to a place where we are not controlled by billionaires and when in fact maybe there's no room for billionaires in this exactly. society. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm sorry. I, they're I, sitting so high atop the energy pyramid, if they were to come down a few notches they would flood energy out. Exactly. And, and that's would, how that's our, we're asking. That's how our work ethic gets corrupted and perverted. Because that's what we're taught that, you know, well, you got to start at the bottom. All these stupid little cliches. You got to start at the bottom. You got to dress for success. The boss is always right. And all this kind of garbage. And so we, you know, we work our balls into the ground to, to, to elevate. You know, we are even taught, well, you know, the company makes money when you do this and when you do that and when you're, you know, willing to go the extra mile and all this crap, then the company makes, well, what, you know, and then it's natural human nature to go, well, what's in it for me? You know, and then they go, well, you get to keep your job. Do you want to work or not? I mean, you can tell there's some bitterness in me. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yes, yes. So, but and I want you, you to know. Start but I mean, I right yeah, right I believe in a good work <laughs> ethic. But I'm tired of having it. You know, I'm tired of having it thrown back in my face like that. Yeah, Jane. So I want to I want to dovetail into the uh, physics metaphors, which is a physiology metaphor. 
in physiology, there's uh, our body systems use negative feedback loops. Negative feedbacks, meaning as one as as one hormone rises, another one hormone rises to negate this down. And so the body stays in regulation that way, and so nothing goes crazy. A positive feedback loop is this logarithmic, like cancer, or like a virus, or like our population, or like the rich get richer. So one example of how that a more negative feedback loop happened, I think, I think it's, it's a good vision, is um, Eritrea is a very, very small country that seeded from Ethiopia. So it's a very top, like the top border country. So they have access to the ocean, which actually helps, you know, in terms of their economy. But the culture, it was a, it was a bloodless secession. They mm. seceded, they made a border, they became their own little tiny country, Eritrea. But their culture is, so status is based on who gives their money away the most. So the poorest people are the highest status people because they've got money coming into them. They give it away, and like, so there, there's, if you're talking about competition, there's not competition because somehow that all works out where the richest people monetarily are actually the poorest, and it actually supports the people who can't pull in that kind of cash. So they, they stick with a monetary system, but they've created a value system that creates a negative feedback loop rather than a positive. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. I guess, five that long. It's very old. So, well, like, what are the what are the incentives for giving away your money? Status. Okay, so so, so, what, so what is value, the status? You're valued. You're, you're, you're considered. You're honored. Different kind of honored. wealth. Yeah, you know? it's a different kind yeah. of status, or it's not a judgment about. You know, it's just a person doesn't. You know, they don't want to be seen as uh, selfish. They want to be seen as generous. Yeah, Maybe there's a cool. value of generosity <laughs> rather than a value of. So of I, of money. I think that we have that, we have we that same sort of mentality right? here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just that. What are we complaining about? <laughs> we don't implement it. You know what I mean? I if, uh, Bill Gates is about to give away like half of his stuff or whatever, like half of his money. You know, and is he going to be honored? You know what I mean? Yeah, he probably will be. You know. But the ways like, he did uh, it. Personally, I mean, he's one of the few rich guys I respect, and for that reason. But there's a couple because of guys that he really gives so much back. Yeah. Well, should we redistribute the wealth? Oh, and I want to say another thing. Like, if someone... It, the reason why the, the super wealthy have all this money, you know what I mean? They're getting the free lunch, we're taking the friction, you know, and, and you cannot have the super rich without the super poor. You know what I mean? That's just a fact. Exactly. That's just a fact. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, if somebody was... You know, what were we talking about? Energy. If someone used their mind in conjunction with their labor to produce something so valuable, you know, that it was worth the billion dollars that he owns, he shouldn't have to redistribute it. He he raised us no, up. He raised us. Okay. I disagree. How do you disagree? No, we have okay. chosen we have chosen to I gotta, value. I gotta rebuttal for that. I've got well, a rebuttal for that. That's what I think was was my point is that that's what makes that loop. But in a society a future society that doesn't have fear in it anymore, where people have the capacity to value generosity over accumulation, then and 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 it's also ba- based on the baser root, which is that we possess anything and we but, own anything. But I think that we're yeah. we're confusing the difference between a producer and a banker. See, a banker just creates the wealth out of nothing, out of thin air. That's whereas, true. Whereas a producer. He is selling us a product, and it is up to our distinction to either buy the product, put value on it, or to create competition to but that But here's product. the flaw in that, okay? No oh, matter yeah. I'm not how it's good perfect. your idea is, no matter how what a you know, no matter how good your idea is, there's no reason why you should be able to. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not totally anti. I'm pro interpreter and everything too. But no matter how good your idea is, there's no reason why you should be able to say, okay, well, this is my idea. It's my intellectual property. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to underpay the people that produce it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep all the wealth for myself because it was my idea, goddammit. And any idea is only as good as, as the, 
as the people that manufacture it and that and that and that transport it and that 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 stock the shelves with it and that and that and that you know it's any idea is only as good as the people that make it a reality and there is no reason why just because see we we are taught that in this country that's part of our that's part of the problem now to my defense is that we are taught okay I'm almost done almost done Give me like 10 more seconds. We are taught that. We are taught that, oh shit, I wish I would have thought of that. I'd be rich. You never, but without, we don't think for a second that, you know, because I believe the whole way business is done should be different. It should be true employee ownership. It should be where there is no executive class and where, where everybody that works in a company shares the profits or suffers the losses all together and that that they are all that that it's run democratically and that the that the, the decision makers are elected from the rank and file of the workers and that they have term limits and that they don't that stops existing I don't and think so you're get therefore any disagreement there and your 10 seconds is beginning to look okay, like Okay sorry minutes. sorry I only like question for your wife now you Okay, uh, Bill Gates, I'm sure, is aware that he did not um, come up with these products by himself. He used the education system, he used the public libraries, he used the roads, he used, you know, everything that's in the common. And, and that's a reason for, um, you know, yes, he deserves good compensation because it's great stuff I guess um, but um, uh, it's also a good reason to level things by taxation because he you know used those things and because the, the other people the waves of people beyond him are going to use those same public things absolutely like no. Elizabeth Warren <laughs> Said that yeah, very same yeah, thing. Elizabeth Warren good, said that. Good restatement of what she said. Now, I think to my great, defense, when I was when I was giving that metaphor, I was I didn't say that he had anyone working underneath him. I said, you know, if one person put in a billion dollars worth of energy, he should have that billion dollars. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that he was inhumane or anything. I mean, that's a real world example. But theoretically, if I was to create a product that costed one cent and it gave you free energy, if I was able to break down a penny to power your house for the rest of your life, to give you free electricity for your kids, free hot water or whatever, it only costed a penny, you know, and I decided, you know what, this is actually more, you know, I should I should be paid more than that. I have just created free energy. Shouldn't I get some more, shouldn't I be compensated to a health, to a to a reasonable amount, to a justified amount, based on supply and okay. demand? Fire, well, Jane. Well, one idea with that is that if there is we're in a society no, 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 that has no fear, and and we have the sense of empathy that's a future society. And the cornerstone of almost every spiritual tradition is the idea of choice. Human choice, not God's choice over. But there's something about thou mayest, not thou shalt. Kim shall, yeah. Thou mayest, meaning, meaning whatever spiritual tradition, you know, people come from, there's always some undercurrent of what, and that's what somebody said, I remember reading somewhere that the whole reason why temptation exists is to give people a choice <laughs> to turn away from it, because otherwise how will they really know that they're building confidence? So, in an empathetic, valuing generosity society, it might be, and without fear, that person might say, you know what, I'm going to save some of that money to go traveling around the world several times. But I'm going to give most of it away because I know I'm going to come up with another idea next year. There's no sense of fear, like, that. there's no sense of, like, I need all of this money. More than enough. I, I can't eat that much food in a year. <laughs> right. This, this has been I love the way great. you think. I, I think this is a great time to, to end a great meeting. We have we have General Assembly. It's right. seven minutes. And I can, oh. you know, take a seven-minute break. I, I thought this was fantastic. Yeah, I, yes. It keeps getting better. It keeps getting better, yeah. Thank you all. It really was. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's just the way it's supposed to be. Everybody talking, everybody bringing it out, everybody dumping it, whatever they think.